You are tuned in to another edition of Americana Music Profiles, brought to you by Americana Rhythm Music Magazine and AmericanaMusicMagazine.com. I'm your host, Greg Tutwiler. Let's jump right in to the next exciting interview. Singer-songwriter Kristen Montgomery can trace his origins to singing in the church choir. As a young man, he was even awarded a medal for his voice singing in a rock band in Boston. As with many artists, the journey of life has taught many lessons along the way, and a lot of those show up in his new 16-track CD entitled The Gravel Church. Kristen is my guest on this edition of Americana Music Profiles. Hi, Kristen. Welcome to the podcast today. Hey, thanks. Thanks for jumping on here with us. Um, so where, um, where are we talking to you from? Where are you currently located? Um, right now, um, I'm living in Boston, but uh, working on lovely Cape Cod. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. All right. And when you say working, there's a lot of people that aren't working in our current situation today. What, what are you up to? Um, so I've always been in uh, the construction business. Um, I uh, kind of a jack of all trades, uh, building houses. I'm also a licensed plumber, and uh, so uh, Cape Cod is one of these places that seems to have an economy that is never affected by the outside world. So I'm pretty blessed to still be working. Yeah, for sure. Amen to that. So. Um, you were born in Florida, is that right? Grew up there. Yeah, I was born in. Yeah, my uh, my father was an immigrant from Denmark, and um, my mom was a blue blooded American girl whose family goes back to the Pilgrims and the Mayflower. And wow, the witch, witches of Salem and all of that, and. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I was born in West Palm Beach, Florida, and. Um, I didn't. I, I was there for quite a while. Uh, I moved around a lot, though. Um, I've been all over the world. Um, I haven't stayed put very often. And you, you got your exposure, if I understand correctly, to to music by actually. Uh, it seems like a lot of people get this uh, singing in the church choir. Yeah. Um, when I, that's where I got exposed to music and capitalism. Um, my uh, my reverend was a professional tenor for the Boston Pops. Oh wow! Okay. And, yeah, he had an amazing voice, and um, he walked past me during one of the services and during one of the hymns, and he heard me uh, singing next to my grandmother, and uh, suggested I sing in the choir. And then uh, my grandmother would pay me five dollars. Or singing a solo, um, oh, cool. you know, she would bribe she would bribe me to <laughs> yeah. to get the com- confidence. And then, um, and then as I got a little bit older, um, I remember uh, I remember sitting in the uh, or standing, you know, uh, during a solo. I think I sang the Lord's Prayer, and um, I think her name was Nancy. I can't remember her last name, but she went to the same church as me, and. Um, I just remember opening my eyes after finishing the, the hymn and seeing her staring at me, and I went, <laughs> this is work. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I realized that, uh, you know, after that, um, a lot of friends had encouraged me to play in some bands and start singing, and uh, I, uh, you know, I think I played my first first rock concert in Boston when I was... 15 or 16 at the Rat in Kenmore Square in Boston. Okay. And uh, and that kind of, that started the roller coaster. And and you were, um, I, I guess, involved pretty much in music from there on out then, right? Even up to uh, winning winning an award in Boston? Yeah, I, I got nominated for uh, Boston Music Awards and... Um, uh, other other music awards in different parts of the world. Um, I know uh, like recently we were nominated for Best Country Act in the Netherlands, of all places. Wow, <laughs> um, that's cool. Um, you know, we're getting a, we're getting a significant amount of radio play over in Europe, so that's working out pretty nicely. But um, you know, we're 
yeah, we definitely got the attention of uh, of the country scene, and uh, I just did an interview with Nashville Country Magazine, um, Nashville Country Music Magazine on Saturday, mm-hmm. and um, I have another interview with Limelight Magazine this week. Um, so it's kind of cool where where we have a sound. So I think that uh, crosses over from country, bluegrass to rock, southern rock, um, you know, um, on this album too, I mean, I have, uh, I did a, uh, sample of, uh, We Will Rock You by Queen and incorporated that into a song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do a little Eleanor Rigby, uh, homage in, uh, the song A Life Like This. So, uh, we're, we have a lot of fun playing with that stuff. What what brought you? Because uh, I think if I read correctly initially, you were uh, more focused on uh, rock music, but then kind of found yourself more in the country Americana genre. What what made you? What drew you into that um, uh, type of ch- uh, change in the style that you play? Um, well, I I have to reverse the question and say what what took me out of it because uh, I grew up. Um, you know, I mean, my first concert ever was Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. Okay. Uh, my aunt. Yeah. My aunt, Patricia, my aunt Patricia taking me to that concert, and, and I was just blown away by the harmonies. Um, and uh, I, I fell in love with country music. I, I My fondest memories of my grandfather uh, were of him and I watching, you know, CMT and, uh, uh, and you know, talking about different artists and, mm-hmm. you know, what he would you know, and we would we would critique the songs and the performances. Um, my uncle John was a pretty avid banjo player, but uh, you know, when I was a kid, um, uh, I kind of got pulled into the the rock scene because I had a very powerful, towering voice at times, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, uh, a lot of people compared me to Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin, and mm, uh, cool, you know. Uh, I, I, I've always been a huge Freddie Mercury fan, and uh, believe oh, yeah. it or not, uh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Tate from Queens, right? These guys with these just powerful boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, you know, I, I got dragged into uh, into playing in a couple of um, you know pretty popular rock bands in Boston, and um, I would uh, I would write music for them for the kind of style that we were playing. Um, but it was, when I approached people with some of my music that was a little bit more just me, uh, the con- of, uh, some of my country stuff, it, it never seemed to get taken by those guys. So uh, this was my opportunity to kind of, I guess, find my individual sound. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, there, there's some... There's definitely influence there from some of the rock that I've played in the past, but um, so I think I, I think I just I, when I did this record, I said I'm just gonna I'm I'm, I'm not gonna think about how it's turning out, where it's gonna go. I'm just gonna do it, and that's how we produced it. it just um, everything on the record was kind of just happenstance, and uh, spur of the moment, it just happened. And uh, the record you're speaking of is the um, the one titled "The Gravel Church." Is that right? Yep. Yep. And that's out now. It's out now. Um, it's uh, I I did my distribution through CD Baby, and um, most of the platforms have it. I'm still waiting on iHeartRadio to accept it, so I can get some of the radio stations that um, use them. Um, but, uh, I mean, we're on Spotify and iTunes, and, um, you can purchase the record on bandcamp.com, um, but, uh, it's, it's amazing how it's, it's everywhere, uh, you know, my, over in Denmark, um, they're able to, uh, pick it up over there where mm-hmm. my dad's in, and, uh, it's, it's, believe it or not, doing pretty well over there, I'm pretty psyched, um, That's cool. I, I love I love traveling there. It's my second home. So, uh, what was the what was the inspiration for this record? Oh gosh, well, um, it's it's somewhat embarrassing. Um, I am uh, 
I've always uh, I've always been a tradesman. I've always been a pl- pretty blue collar guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I've been a father for the better part of you know I, I have six kids. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, I, I have four um, with a um, with a mother who uh, I battled quite a bit with as far as. Uh, being able to see the kids, and here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, it's very difficult for mm. dads, dads to stay in the picture, right. and so difficult, so difficult that it put me in prison for six months. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a type 1 diabetic, and um, I uh, asked the judge to lower my child support at one point after I almost died, and when he said no, I made the mistake of telling him how I felt about it, <laughs> and uh, and I was thrown in prison for six months. And the gravel church was a twenty-five by twenty-five foot area that I was uh, the only place I was allowed to see the sun sunlight. Um, wow! And that's where I did, did the majority of my thinking and my praying, and uh, and also uh, it was the first place that I've ever written a song on paper without an instrument in front of me. Huh. Um, I, wrote a, I wrote a song called Razor Wire Heart for my kid, just to let them know that I was, I'm still here and I'm right. not yeah. giving up. Yeah, I would imagine an experience like that gives you uh, plenty of um, plenty of things to write about uh, once you get a chance to sit uh, down and put them on paper and work them out. It, it sure did. Uh, you know, I I had a uh, uh, I had an instant where I was in a, a situation where uh, I uh, had a conflict with a man who was quite a bit younger than me, and I ended up in solitary confinement for a week for getting into fisticuffs with this gentleman. Mm. And uh, I mean, it was all over the fact that I snored. Oh um, no. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I walked out of there in a, in a way somewhat proud, thinking to myself, you know, I still got it. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know I, can still, I can still run with the pack. So, so was music, were, were you involved with music in any sort of significant way prior to, to spending time in jail? I was. Um, I, I got remarried to, uh, my childhood sweetheart, who, um, you know, she, we, we both lived in a fishing village, and um, I used to check her out down on the docks when we were kids, and, um, you know, she got divorced around the same time as me, and when we got married, we talked about it, and she said, listen, you've been so close so many times to being able to just do this for a living, Yeah, and it, it's your passion, it's your calling, you know, whatever resources we have to expend let's go for it. Um, And uh, we were planning on getting into the studio prior to that um, just to do a five-song EP. And then that turned into a 16-song album, which was kind of the, uh, uh, you know, those 16 songs represent a year in my life that are... uh, yeah. And, and it's meant to be listened to as an album. It's, okay. Uh, I, I know that this is a, a day and age where, there, you know, the intention span has dropped and the interest level as far as, like, what the songs are really about anymore sometimes seems unimportant. But, I mean, this, this is an album uh, that, you know, described everything that happened to me mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. In, a, in a certain point in my life. And so... It was very cleansing, and it was very, uh, I mean, it just, uh, it was like a deep exhale after it was finished. Yeah, so. I'm sure. So when you when you play out with this record and this music, do you get to play it that way? Do you get to play it conceptually as, as it was written, the way you want people to understand it? Um, we do. Uh, we, um, we definitely, uh, my guitar player, Joe, and I, uh, and bass player Tim have a really cool chemistry, and, and 
the Winter Kill Band is kind of an evolving thing that people are coming in and out of. Uh, I had a, a good friend, uh, Keith Schleicher, that was bass player uh, from a band, the Hepo in Boston. Um, this guy, Jeff Armstrong, came in and sat in on six songs. Uh, he's in a band called the Delta Generators. Um, they're starting to do really well. Um, they're a bluegrass, um, you know, hmm. Americana band. Yeah, cool. Uh, I, I, I would recommend them to everybody. They're really good. Uh, they just got on the soundtrack of a couple of uh, um, cool television shows. Oh, neat. Um, yep. Yeah, but they're, uh, you know, I, people come in and we, you know, these six songs, uh, they're definitely not played live the way they are on the album. I mean, everybody takes liberties. Everybody has a chance to to kind of go off on a tangent. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. My very my very good friend Kayla Dutton um, um, was uh, kind enough to donate some time and sing on my record. Uh, she uh, she sang on uh, a life like this, and uh, at the end of uh, "Take You Home." which is a, a song that I wrote about uh, dating after getting divorced. Uh, if you listen to the end of that song, I mean, uh, I call it an epic journey. I mean, it just meanders and blues is out at the end, and she's got this amazing Paula Cole-like voice, um, and and she's really easy on the eyes, too. Um, she, uh, she's a beautiful girl. And, um, you know, inside and out, I mean, just a, a lovely person. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, when, uh, when she sings, I mean, you can kind of see all the guys in the band just melt. It's like, oh man. Yeah. Like, cool. <laughs> we, we have such a cool live chemistry. So, so what, what's the, um, I, I'm assuming that this has not been out too long yet. What do you have a plan going forward for uh, getting to, to tour with the record? Uh, you mentioned in the beginning of our conversation that you, you know, you've got a full-time job that you do. What does it look like to be able to get out on the road with this and, and, uh, and support the record? Um, I, don't, it's, I mean, honestly, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. I do, a, even prior to uh, this record, I've done a lot of solo acoustic stuff. Okay. Um, and, and whether it's me by myself um, doing my Colin Hay storytelling uh, concerts um, or with a band, um, you know, it's, it, it's definitely a priority. I mean, we want to get out there. We want to play. Um, but the, I think the great thing about everything right now is uh, for a band like us who are we, we don't have a lot of money behind us. I mean, everything that we've done up to this point has been on our own. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we we, uh, uh, we don't have an extraordinary amount of funds or anything like that, but it, it's been great. Like, you know, for, for your publicist to call you up and say, you know, I drank two bottles of wine the other night and just sent your stuff everywhere. Uh-huh. <laughs> usually, usually, usually they don't have the time to really put to put into this stuff. I mean, the world it's like it's just such a busy place now, and everybody's yeah, a mile. Yeah. But this has slowed slowed the pace down a little bit to where people like us, who may you know we're not a major market, you know, yet uh, we we have the opportunity to kind of get a word in. Sure, so, sure, yeah, yeah. So I'm, ho- I'm hoping that by the time that everybody's allowed to go back out and play and enjoy life, um, that we will have had the opportunity to tell everybody about our album and tell everybody about our, you know, what our live shows are about. Sure, yeah. And, uh, and to have people want to come out and do that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so the record, again, is The Gravel Church, and um, remind us of your website, how people can get in touch with you. Yes, you can find us on all the music platforms. Um, my my personal website is www.amwab.com, and um, all of our links to social media are there, our links to all of our uh, stuff that we've done with the media. Um, 
and uh, links to all of our music, YouTube, and all that there. So you can see some of the live stuff that I've done. Um, I've already got enough material for another record up on YouTube. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. Now my my producer Joe is like, dude, I I can't keep up with you, but <laughs> like this is this is an, the next album is going to be just as full of hits as the last one. You wow. Can already tell. Yeah, that's so cool. Good. Well, thanks, Kristen. I appreciate you sharing your story and, and um, letting us learn more about your music, and we certainly wish you well with it. Thanks. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of Americana Music Profiles. Find us on iTunes at Americana Music Profiles and on the Internet at AmericanaRhythm.com.